Very few Victorians had a bigger impact on London and its citizens than Sir Joseph Bazalgette. During the mid-1800s, he designed the sewage system that's still in use today, the Thames Embankment, and several bridges and roads in the capital. In this tour, we want to celebrate the life and the work of this incredible man, whose engineering skills helped improve the quality of life in London and helped shape it into the city that it is today. Follow me. Joseph Bazalgette was born in Enfield, London on March the 28th, 1819. When he was eight, he moved here to Hamilton Terrace in St. John's Wood, where he spent his teenage and young adult years. He was privately educated and began his career as a railway engineer in Northern Ireland in 1836. Then in 1842, Bazalgette set up his own practice in London to work on the expansion of London's railways. In 1845, he married Maria Koff, and over the next 16 years, they had 11 children. In 1847, Bazalgette suffered a nervous breakdown and moved to the countryside to recuperate. In his memoirs, he wrote, I began my work when the great railway mania broke out and nearly killed myself before I joined the old commission of sewers. By 1849, a refreshed Joseph returned to London in the middle of the cholera epidemic, a disease contracted through dirty water. It was at this time he was appointed the Metropolitan Commission of Sewers, where London had no unified system of drainage. Under head engineer Frank Foster, Bazalgette set to work on a solution, but Foster soon quit from stress and died in 1852. Over the next two years, cholera took another 10,000 lives in London. In response to this, in 1855, the Metropolitan Board of Works was created to ensure London had sufficient roads, bridges, as well as sewers. By this time, London's population had doubled in just 50 years. This created a huge increase in human waste which London's old Roman drainage systems could not handle. Sewage poured into the Thames, the source of drinking water for most Londoners, killing all of the river's fish and wildlife. The Thames was now a serious health hazard to Londoners. And then came the Great Stink in the summer of 1858. Record-breaking temperatures hit London, fermenting and decomposing the waste in the river and creating a stench that shocked the city. This was overwhelming for Londoners. Even MPs in Westminster soaked the curtains of the commons in chloride of lime in hope it would stop the smell, but it didn't work. In a few days, MPs passed a new law allowing Bazalgette to create a proper sewage system for the capital. Work on the new sewage system started in 1859. The scale of the project was enormous. His solution included building 83 miles of underground sewers and over 1,000 miles of street sewers and four new pumping stations located at Abbey Mills, Pimlico, Deptford and Crossness. Bazalgette also proposed embankments along the Thames for huge pipes to avoid digging up central London. This way, foul water would be diverted to pumping stations and then out to sea. The embankments were so large that some of the underground tube lines are housed there. The project was completed between 1859 and 1871 and during that time was described by the Observer newspaper as the most expensive and wonderful work of modern times. Thinking ahead, Bazalgette knew that London's population would continue to grow, so he designed a sewage network for twice as many people as required. Today, 150 years after its construction, it serves 9 million people, which means it has reached its capacity. Unfortunately, and as a result, Millions of tons of raw sewage are being dumped in the river every year. The good news is as we record this video, a new super sewage called Tideway Tunnel is being constructed to catch up with the present and future demands of the city. But arguably, Bazalgette did more than anyone to improve the health of the Victorian capital. After being knighted in 1874 for solving London's sewage problem and helping to eradicate cholera in London, Sir Joseph began work on the city's roads and bridges. Some of London's roads were completely inadequate by the late 19th century, and Bazalgette got involved in building at least five well-known roads. Charing Cross Road, Shaftesbury Avenue, Northumberland Avenue, Southwark Street and Queen Victoria Street. 
New street construction helped ease congestion from horse-drawn carriages and improve traffic flow. Such was Bazalgette's renown. He was approached by cities and towns, both in Britain and abroad, to act as consultant on improving their amenities. Bazalgette's Board of Works also took control of bridges from private orders to eliminate tolls for the public. He decided to redesign bridges for Putney, Battersea and this one behind me, Hammersmith Bridge. Hammersmith Bridge was London's first suspension bridge over the Thames. It was designed by William Turney Clark, but by the 1870s, Turney Clark's bridge proved too weak for the increased traffic. Eventually, the Metropolitan Board of Works took control of it in 1880. Bazalgette worked in a new design using wrought iron while keeping the original foundations. It was opened by Prince of Wales in 1887. As we record this video, the bridge is closed to motor vehicles and only pedestrians and bicycles are allowed to use it after cracks were discovered in the pedestals. Putney Bridge, with medieval parish churches on both sides, has been a starting point of the boat race since 1845. The original wooden structure, which was called Fulham Bridge, was built in 1729 and had 26 arches. The bridge that we see today was constructed in 1886 based on Bazalgette's design. This time as a stronger five-span layout made of stone and Cornish granite. Battersea Bridge also needed an overhaul. The original wooden bridge was low and wobbly. Situated on a bend in the river with 18 piers which made it dangerous for boats and other users. The old bridge was also a fond subject for artists like Turner, Whistler and Greaves. There's even a statue of Whistler on the corner between Chain Walk and Battersea Bridge. Bazalgette turned this rickety bridge into another five-span bridge made out of cast iron and granite. The Albert Bridge was built in 1873, but it quickly became known as the Trembling Navy because it was too weak. Soldiers were even told to march out of step to help stop the bridge shaking. Sir Joseph strengthened it between 1884 and 1887 to make it more stable. Towards the end of his life, Bazalgette was named the president of the Institution of Civil Engineers. But he soon retired in 1889 after a long and illustrious career. Sadly, two years later, he died at home in Wimbledon. But he will always be remembered for improving the health of Londoners with his sewage system. Thanks to his work, the Thames is one of the cleanest metropolitan rivers in the world and it will be even cleaner once the Tideway Tunnel is completed. Although Bazalgette's name remains largely unknown today, his engineering solutions are still significant to the city. At urbanwise.london we think it's crucial to remember the contributions of people like him. We are convinced his exemplary work will inspire the younger generation to tackle some of the environmental challenges that we face today. We want to thank Sir Joseph Bazalgette for all of his work and for showing to us that no problem is too big to conquer.